hello uh, this tutorial is uh, about uh, VPN virtual private networking virtual private networking basically as it uh, it is pretty self-explanatory self-descriptive that uh, it creates a virtual uh, private network for those who want to access a secure network uh, uh, from uh, from the field, from home, from the hotel, from hotel. Uh, if they're traveling something and they can actually log into their corporate network or any other network all over the world that provides them this VPN capability. So VPN is a virtual private networking uh, protocol and the, the actual protocols which are used in this uh, networking is TCP IP. Everyone knows about it then UDP, which is User Data Gram Protocol, and then uh, the, uh, the, uh, tunneling, the tunneling protocol it uh, uses in the background is PPTP, point-to-point -point tunnel, uh, tunneling protocol. Uh, software is VPN client, which is normally, uh, which is basically the company which actually makes this VPN client, is Cisco. Um, Connections required are dial-up networking, right? The old-fashioned, you know, uh, modem dialing. Uh, then comes that cable DSL, right? Broadband and or the Wi-Fi. So these are those connections are required to actually connect to a VPN client, VPN server actually. Now the server works uh, on a Windows server, okay? And then there's this terminal server should be running on the machine and that terminal server basically uh, gets the information from uh, the active directory and active directory actually provides the information about who is uh, is allowed to use this vpn service or and who isn't right so that this is pretty much it so the uh, uh, system administrator has to install the server on the term uh, the vpn server uh, which should be a part of the terminal server. Uh, terminal, terminal, terminal. Uh, so, uh, so that terminal server actually allows those users to have uh, access to this VPN server and allows those people using different types of connection and, you know, let them use the corporate uh, resources. So again, the reason I'm actually uh, recording this uh, tutorial is that uh, when people try to connect uh, through the VPN client, they always run into issues, different types of issues. Sometimes it just doesn't really connect. Sometimes it just starts telling them your password has been expired. Your password is not working fine. They are pretty sure that their password is fine. But they haven't uh, forgotten the password yet or their uh, ID or password, anything. But it just keeps telling them and the 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 interesting part is a lot of people they are under this impression that as a VPN itself is a connection like if you don't have internet in some somewhere then if you have VPN installed on your laptop then the people are under this impression that, that this VPN would actually give them the internet connection and that is a fallacy it doesn't really work that way uh, VPN is totally dependent upon an existing connection. That would be a dial-up connection, a cable DSL broadband connection, or a Wi-Fi connection, which also requires a broadband Wi-Fi router, right? So that's very important. So the first thing is uh, when you log into your laptop, right? So the first thing is first you have to make sure that you are connected to your Wi-Fi at home in that hotel or if you're traveling in Starbucks or it, it, uh, or a Panera Bread or any other coffee shop or something, they provide those hotspots. Or even at the airport, they have those Boingo going, right? Those other uh, services. So if you uh, are not really sure you're connected or not, then you really have to make sure by going to the, uh, by opening the browser, you know, your web browser, your Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, and then try to you know browse to google or yahoo or msn or something and make sure that you can browse the web if you can browse the web 
then just forget your VPN. Okay, you really have to make sure that you have to connect. You have to be connected to the internet. So in order to connect to the internet, then what is going to happen is the uh, the Wi-Fi utility installed on your laptop. Just to let you guys know that um, Windows has own uh, wireless utility installed, right, on all these laptops, right, the basic one. But if you're using a corporate network, right, it is your office laptop or PC, then you really have to make sure that the utility is what you're going to use to connect to the office network. The wireless utility is the one they have provided you. Like if it could be an Intel ProSec, it could be an AT&T Wi-Fi, it could be something, but which is totally provided by your company. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so once you go in there, you have to make sure that you, you are using the right utility and it is allowing you to connect to the internet. Okay, in order to connect to the internet, sometimes what really happens when you double click on it, it just starts showing you those uh, connections, right? Connection, uh, different connections uh, in your area, your neighborhood, your home connection, your other Wi Fi connections, right? Uh, in your surrounding. And you just go ahead and start double clicking on it and say, okay, I should be connected now. Sometimes it start, even it starts showing you uh, your uh, the, the icon in your taskbar on your right right hand corner. Uh, it just turns green and people get this pressure okay i'm all connected but when they try to browse the web they can't really browse the web internet's not available so a lot of time it is required to go ahead and reboot the laptop okay and after rebooting the laptop try to connect again if it doesn't then right click on it go to the uh, uh, go to your particular connection go to the properties and see if there's some kind of conflict going on. Um, there, if it is not connected, then there's a possibility it is not even going to the, their website. Um, mostly when you're in a hotel or in a motel, uh, even those Boingo connections, something, uh, they actually take you straight to their website. So once on there, you're on their website, you have to um, uh, accept a, some accept a, a disclaimer. Or you, first, you have to accept that disclaimer. That disclaimer actually allows you to get out, get outside their 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 uh, network, and then you can browse the web, right? So, um, so you have to make sure that sometimes you really have to work with the hotel staff also, and they will give you some extra steps or something. But most of the time, you just have to make sure that you can go to their website. Uh, once you are connected to their website, it means your Wi-Fi uh, wireless card on your laptop is communicating with their router okay their router has allowed you to connect but it's still there's one more thing left that is th that disclaimer part so you really have to submit uh, accept that disclaimer and that will actually allow you to go to those other sites that's the first thing the other thing is at home you try to connect and you're not connecting that's your corporate laptop so make sure that you are using the right intel pro set wireless utility or AT&T wireless utility or Cisco any connect wireless utility you're using there okay other uh, windows uh, default uh, Wi-Fi and uh, usually won't really work okay there's a conflict it's, it starts to internet okay now once you're all connected and everything so then you try to connect and then you get VPN error 413 make sure when you see uh, error 413 it has to do with your password and ID and password that's very important that's your ID and password which is not working out so probably you forgot your password probably your password has expired or something you can just call your um, corporate uh, IT support they would actually help you out they would just uh, research your password uh, and then you'll be good to go right uh, the other thing is VPN error 412 it is mostly the transportation part so when you get this 412 thing then make sure that uh, when you go to the VPN client go select your entry right click on it go to properties then you go to transportation and make sure that it is not on UDP it, it is supposed to be on TCP 
always TCP. It switches back to UDP when you try to connect at some, again, public place some public hotspot or something it just uh, then the vpn uh, tries to be very smart and just start switching the protocol and you know tries to connect from using different alternatives but um, just to let you know tcp is the the most uh, the most important uh, most essential protocol there it has to be on tcp tcp make sure so ipsec has to be on tcp okay now um, vpn error 5 error 5 is mostly has to do with the VPN software itself. VPN software is, is a combination of a bunch of files. So if you go there and the uh, it is not connecting something, um, giving you this error five and says you know the, the client has been terminated and da 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 different types of stuff. So make sure that error five is you just have to go back in to your uh, uh, VPN client. And if you have the setup file somewhere, you have to install the VPN setup file again. And after installing that thing, most of the time, corporate laptops have this utility available, which actually uh, is called Cisco Repair Agent. Okay, for your Cisco clients, it is a Cisco Repair Agent. Um, but um, uh, but if it's not there, then uh, call your corporate again support line, and they would help you to how to actually. Uh, refresh your uh, VPN software okay again VPN entry not found or something then that entry has been deleted or something so you can just go back into your VPN client and you can add that entry manually again that VPN error 5 after reinstalling those files refreshing you might have to go back to your configuration part in your VPN client and then you have to reconfigure to make sure that you are connected to the right server you uh, are using the right protocol, the right TCP IP address was there, and everything like that, okay? This is pretty much it. This is my tutorial. If you have any other questions, just leave your comments or questions in my, in the comment section and of this video, and uh, I would be uploading some more. Next one would be about Citrix. So this is a very basic information, uh, piece of information I have actually provided, and if you guys like it or something, Feel free to leave some good comments and I would keep uploading some good ones in the future. Thanks again for listening. Thanks again for watching. You all have a nice day.